It's titled Afghanistan a year later. Can we finally speak honestly about Bush and Cheney's little war? The fact of the matter is that the media has been reporting, particularly over the weekend, uh, you know, Fareed Zakaria did a whole hour-long special on it, in fact, on his program, GPS, on Sunday, that basically we had to invade Afghanistan because the Taliban wouldn't give us bin Laden. It turns out that that's not true at all. The Taliban repeatedly tried to give us bin Laden. This is reported in the Washington Post just three days after 9-11, or four days after 9-11 on September 15th. The, the, the Taliban was begging to give us bin Laden, in fact. I mean, they didn't want to be bombed back to the Stone Age. They were already in the Stone Age. It was the second poorest country in the world behind Burkina Faso. So why did Bush and Cheney decide to attack Afghanistan? Well, you've got to consider, number one, at the time that this happened, their, their popularity ratings, their approval ratings were in the tank. They were in the neighborhood of 50% because... Americans still thought that, you know, I mean, Bush lost the election by a half million votes. And it, the word was leaking out, you know, this BBC special that had been done that showed that, that uh, George W. Bush's brother, Jeb, the governor of Florida, had knocked 90,000 African Americans off the voting rolls, was the only reason that George W. Bush was in the White House, you know, combined with the Supreme Court stopping the recount down in Florida that the Florida Supreme Court had ordered so much for the 10th Amendment, right? So number one, they needed a distraction. Number two, they were already planning to have a war against Iraq. That had been planned since 1998 by the Project for New American Century that Jeb Bush had signed on to. George W. Bush told his biographer, Mickey Herskowitz, in 1999, the year that he was preparing to run for president, uh, Mickey Herskowitz wrote a, the first draft of A Charge to Keep, Bush's so-called autobiography. He told him, you know, if uh, my father had all his political capital built up when he invaded Iraq, and he blew it. If I have a chance, if I become president, if I have a chance to invade Iraq, I'm not going to have a short war. I'm going to have a long war, and I'm going to get everything done. In other words, it was all for his reelection. They were planning in 2003 to invade Iraq just in time for the 2004 election because Bush knew that wartime presidents are more likely to get reelected. There's a long history of this. It goes back to FDR. It goes back to Abraham Lincoln. It's not a secret. And so adding the Afghanistan war to it was just gravy. But the fact of the matter is Afghanistan had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. It was not planned in Afghanistan. It was planned in Germany and in Jupiter, Florida. It was not, it, you know, the, the, the closest that any of it came to it was that bin Laden wrote the check and he was living in Afghanistan. But it, it, we, people say, well, but bin Laden had uh, terrorist training camps. Yes, he did. But none of the hijackers went through those training camps. The training camps were basically just a, you know, a little PR and fundraising thing that bin Laden was running, and maybe 5,000 people had been through them. They were like the, you know, the ones that militias run here in the United States, where these guys go out and just you know, run around in the woods pretending that they're, that they're soldiers. So you know, what did Afghanistan have to do with 9-11? Literally nothing. So why did we attack Afghanistan? Because Bush and Cheney thought it would help them politically. They thought it would raise the chances of them getting reelected. It would raise their uh, approval ratings. And by the way, they were right. It did. It worked out that way. The other question, so number one, you know, why do we continue this myth that Afghanistan was refusing to turn over bin Laden? Well, because the Republican Party has been pushing it since 2002. The news media keeps coming out and saying it's not true, it's a lie. But every time a Republican gets in front of a camera, that's what they'll say. I saw this over the weekend twice. But it simply was not true. Afghanistan was begging to give us, or give a third country, bin Laden. So, number one, that was a lie. Number two, we say, well, we had a war for 20 years. We didn't have a war for 20 years. We had a war for three weeks. It took us three weeks to take down the government in Kabul. That was it. The war was over. Then began a 20-year occupation, just like in Vietnam. 
you know, we, we secured the government of South Vietnam in a matter of months. But then, you know, it was like, how do you occupy a country where the people really don't want you there? And, you know, that was the great challenge. That was the, 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 the you know, how do we figure this one out? Right. And so here we are. We, you know, and, this, and by the way, this war was never declared. The Constitution clearly says Congress has to declare a war. I realize there was an authorization to use military force, but uh, the AUMF did not, uh, did not meet the constitutional requirement that Congress declare wars. It's right there in Article 1. Only Congress has the power to declare a war. And the last time Congress declared a war was World War II. We've had a bunch of these things. Vietnam, uh, Korea, Bosnia, Afghanistan, Iraq. None of them were declared wars. We need to, we need to reckon with this. It's, it's time for us to have an honest accounting of our own history, to own up to the fact, and it is a fact, to own up to the fact that Afghanistan represented no threat to us. This was a country that had a GDP of $2 billion a year. The average income in Afghanistan was $2 a day. We could have gone into Afghanistan and said, here, here's $10 billion. We'll make the whole country five times as rich as it is. And you give us bin Laden. They would have put him on a float and, and run a parade to deliver him to us. But instead, George W. Bush and, Don, and Dick Cheney wanted to have a war. They thought that a war would be a useful thing for them. They thought that a war would get them, you know, uh, uh, good headlines. It would get that, you know, wars cause a rally around the flag effect. This is a reality that is not lost on these guys. They understand how it works. They know exactly how it works. And, and thus, you know, here we are. Here we are with with a uh, with a, a, a lie. The whole Afghanistan war was a lie, and not only that, it was a lie that made contractors trillions of dollars, or at least hundreds of billions of dollars, including contractors. You know, the Carlyle Group, who was the CEO of the Carlyle Group for a while, Poppy Bush. You know, the, the, who ran Halliburton? Dick Cheney. In fact, it was on the verge of bankruptcy before the, before the Afghan war. The Afghan war saved Dick Cheney's bacon. You got, you know, Betsy DeVos's brother was running Blackwater. They, they got rich, too. Everybody was an orgy of getting rich. And then that leads us finally to the question of why did bin Laden attack America in the first place? Well, that was because George Herbert Walker Bush, when he wanted to have his little war so that he could beat Bill Clinton in the 92 election, didn't quite work out for him, but it did help substantially, helped his uh, uh, approval ratings. He wanted to have a little war. He had a three-day war in Iraq to help out, you know, his oil-rich buddies in Kuwait after he had told Iraq, yeah, go ahead, do, you know, invade Kuwait through April Gillespie, who's been on this program talking about it. So George Herbert Walker Bush put American soldiers at the Bin Sultan Air Base, or the Prince, Prince Sultan Air Base, in Saudi Arabia. And that's what triggered Bin Laden. It was like, how dare you? You've got men watching porn and drinking alcohol, defiling the holy soil of Saudi Arabia. You've got women showing their elbows and driving vehicles on Saudi soil. And over and over again in 1996, in 1998, in 1999, in 2000, over and over again in, a, in an op-ed published in the New York Times, bin Laden said that he was going to attack America if we didn't remove our soldiers from holy Saudi soil. So George Herbert Walker Bush wanted to have a war in Iraq to help himself get reelected. That war was the thing that set off bin Laden that led to the, Af the you know, 9-11, which then was used by George, George Herbert Walker Bush's son, George W. Bush, as an excuse for a second illegal, unnecessary war that led to tens of thousands of civilian deaths. When are we going to learn? When are we going to wake up from this stuff? <laughs> 